Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at some curve alternatives and why you may not even need curves at all. All right, let's establish something very important first. No one will ever watch your movie and say, you know what I really loved about your movie? The curves. No one cares how you get good color it's up to you to choose the tools that you like. A little bit of history. Uh, we're going to start in Photoshop and then we'll go to, to Premiere Pro, but some history that's very important first. Photoshop has always had brightness contrast uh, as one setting, levels as another, and curves as another. And um, brightness and contrast used to suck really bad because it was a linear, horrible uh, setting. I'm going to show you why that isn't true anymore. It's really powerful. There are three different levels of understanding uh, editing. And I get the question, why are curves important? Why are they powerful and why are they popular? Well, I'm gonna give you two reasons why they're popular. The first one is to those really high-end color editors. That's not me, that's probably not you. To those color colorists and color nerds out there, uh, color uh, curves are, are more important to them. And the second reason people use curves is they think it makes them look really smart and powerful. It, it, I'll show you how you don't have to use them. The, the only time I get into curves is when anything else doesn't work. So it used to be that, that um, people would learn Photoshop, I'm talking back in the 90s, they learned Photoshop brightness and contrast, and then somebody that used levels would look down at the brightness contrast person and say, I don't use that. And then they would graduate to levels. And then the curves person would look at the levels person and go, I don't use that. Um, I use curves. All three of them are great. Let me show you the, the limitations that levels now has, uh, and then we'll get into Premiere Pro. All right. So I've got a gradient here. This is the easiest way to understand what's going on. And I'm going to use brightness and contrast. So I've got three adjustment uh, layers here. So this is brightness and contrast. Everything is set to zero. As I start to turn the contrast up, you'll notice that the, the light stuff gets lighter, the dark stuff gets darker. What all of these tools do is they redistribute pixel color from one area to another. And the most powerful is curves, but the easiest to make a mistake with is curves. All right, let's go to levels. And there are three different sliders. This is the shadow slider. So you can see it darkens the shadows up. And this one lightens the light up. And then this is the gamma in the middle. So you can get the equivalent by playing around with these. Now, what I wanted to show you um, that is dangerous is if you brighten the highlights there by dragging this down. This is a typical thing a lot of people will do. And, and sometimes it's okay, but where it can be a problem is if you're clipping. You see that line there? We've lost all the pixels in here. I use levels all the time, but I pay attention in my image. Am I starting to pull that down? Am I starting to lose the highlights? If I am, then I back that off or I'll use brightness and contrast. Now, let me go back to what we had before where we were brightening this up a little bit, darkening this up a little bit more and then moving the midpoint, which is the gamma. Now let's go look at curves. So in our curves, Let me drag this down so we can see the curves more. And it, again, it's going to redistribute the pixels. So if you drag this over, you're seeing it's going to do the exact same thing that the levels did when you pushed it too far. Same thing with the bottom. You push this and it's going to crush the blacks. In the middle is the gamma. So if we push this up, it's going to brighten everything up. If we pull it down, it's going to darken it. Okay, let's reset that. A very common way to add contrast in curves is through an S curve. And you can drag this three quarter point over to the left and drag this 
one quarter point down here over to the right. And that creates this S curve. Or you can go to a preset and choose increase contrast. Boom. And look at how similar it is to the brightness and contrast. And it adds those points in there for us. So the steeper the slope, the bigger the change. But you can really mess around in here. So if I'm editing one point in here very easily, and you'll, you'll see that this is a typical thing that happens in curves is this teeter-totter craziness that goes on. So if I push this, yes, I can edit that one little area in here, but that flattening out point is going to flatten out those pixels. And a lot of times, if you mess around with curves like this, with all these crazy points in there, you can posterize a tiny area. A posterization happens when, for instance, this is a gradient and it's made up of uh, thousands of, of levels. Well, if it's made of fewer levels, then you'll see stepping going on there. So if you're trying to isolate shadows in the face and you push this around, you might end up posterizing part of the face. That's why I tell you it's incredibly dangerous, very powerful. I bow down to you colorists who will, who will do this stuff. But for me, I rarely have to do this. If you're in high-end coloring work, the curves, you're in it all the time. But for most of us, it's probably not something we need. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and look at the same thing. So we're in our Lumetri uh, color panel. And if we open up our R RGB curves, here's the same gradient that we've got going on in here. And we can do the same thing. We can grab this and add contrast. Same thing. You can add as many points to this. You could do the exact same thing I was doing there in, in uh, Photoshop and create whatever you want. OK. But let's make it more practical. Let's actually look at changing a clip. So I, I, I picked a clip that is very washed out. And if we go to our scopes, you can see that it's really missing the blacks in here. So could we do this? Sure. We could bring that contrast there. We could do that maybe not that much. And now we've got that kind of a look. So let's reset that. And instead, let's go all the way up to basic correction. And oh, look at what we've got here. We've got a contrast setting. And I can drag that contrast setting up. Now, Adobe specifically limited the amount of changes that this contrast slider, you can see it's not as much as the contrast slider in Photoshop. That was a conscious decision. Um, the engineers didn't want users to accidentally push things too far. I don't use the contrast in here. What I would use is the color wheels. So think of this more like the three controls that you saw in levels. So I can crush the blacks here. And I can brighten the highlights there. And I could take the gamma and move that down. Now, anytime you increase contrast like that, you're going to increase saturation. That just goes without saying. Yes, this has got more contrast, but it also has more saturation. So if we go either to basic and change the saturation or creative, there's no right or wrong. It's just it's in both areas. And we drag the saturation down in here. Now let's turn this off and turn that on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Did we need curves? Uh-uh. I used the um, color wheels and reduced the saturation. Now it's got more of what some people will call, and I never agree on this term, a more cine cinematic look. Um, higher contrast and less saturation. And again, I'll show you another way. This is with shadows, blacks, highlights, contrast, desaturate. So don't feel like you have to learn everything about curves. 
They're very powerful, but they're also very destructive and it's easy to make a mistake. One of the reasons why Adobe Lightroom is so popular is because they added all these sliders that were an extension to curves. You didn't have to use curves. You could use something called contrast and brightness. Um, like I said, I love the color wheels in here. I'll use those a lot of times. I'll either bump up the, the uh, if, I, if it was shot a little bit dark, I'll bump up the exposure. Then I'll use the two, uh, the three color wheels to affect the image. And rarely do I have to feel like I am a prisoner of learning about curves. Curves are great for you color nerds out there. But for me and most of us, the rest of the tools in the Lumetri color panel and brightness and contrast in Photoshop is all we need. All right, if you're new to Video or Real and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us more, you can do that like our many wonderful PayPal supporters. You can do that. There's a link in the in description and one on the front of the channel. Thanks to all of our wonderful PayPal supporters. Um, if you want to be notified of our weekly tutorials, ring the bell down at the bottom and you'll be notified. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to free you up the shackles of thinking you have to learn current.